Good morning, everyone. My name is Ray Melton. I'm the Business and Cooperative Program Director for the State of New Mexico on the Rural Business Programs. Uh, with me today, I have Ms. Maria Meadowcroft. I have Ms. Delee Taylor. I have Ms. Allison Martinez. And I have Ms. Megan Sandoval. These ladies work in and administer this program and have knowledge of how to assist you on the program. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and turn this over now to Maria and allow her to go through the training for you. Thank you. Good morning. Today, I'm gonna to talk about the Rural Business Development Grant Program that the USDA offers. Um, our Rural Business Development Grant, the purpose of the program is to make grants eligible to entities located in rural areas for use in funding various business opportunity and business enterprise projects that serve rural areas. Applications compete in two separate categories, business opportunity and business enterprise, for use in funding various business and community projects that serve rural areas. This is a competitive grant program that assists rural projects that finance and facilitate development of small and emerging businesses it's a one-year grant, so projects must reasonably be expected to be completed within one full year after it has begun. The project is considered to begin on the date that the grant agreement is signed. Business opportunity type projects. Funds can be used for eligible projects such as identify and analyze business opportunities, identify, train, and provide technical assistance, establish business support centers, conduct local community and multi-county economic development. Total opportunity type grant funds is limited to up to 10% of the total rural business development grant annual funding, which basically means we don't get a lot of money to fund opportunity type projects, so we encourage enterprise type projects um, and enterprise projects are grant funds may be used to finance and or develop small and emerging businesses in rural areas, including but not limited to acquisition and development of land easements and rights of way, construction, conversion, provisions of loans for startup operating costs and working capital, establishment of a revolving loan fund, technical assistance, et cetera. Um, Rural business development grant funds must be directed for projects benefiting rural areas or towns outside the urbanized periphery of any city with a population of 50,000 or more, according to the latest decennial census of the United States. Um, so it, they're, they're meant to help rural communities. What is or who is an eligible applicant? So this program is there's an applicant and there's a recipient. Um, the applicant helps administer the grant for the recipient, which are the, the small businesses, basically. So eligible applicants are rural communities, towns, state agencies or authorities, nonprofit entities, federally recognized tribes, public institutions of higher education, nonprofit cooperatives. Applicants must be able to show financial strength and expertise. They must have sufficient financial strength and expertise and activities proposed in the application to ensure accomplishment of the described activities and objectives. We wanna make sure that, that they can administer the grant. And then the small, what is a small business who, who the applicant will be helping and it's any private or nonprofit business which will employ 50 or fewer new employees and has less than 1 million in gross revenues. And types of assistance, enterprise type projects, they must help small and emerging businesses. Grant funds may be used to finance and or develop small and emerging businesses in rural areas, including but not limited to technical assistance activities, such as feasibility studies, and business and or marketing plans. This can include salaries and expenses directly related to providing the technical assistance or training to small and emerging business enterprises. 
The grant must certify that the technical assistance provide, provided is benefiting the rural area and the project is located in a rural area. And so the applicant does not need to be in a rural area, but the, the small businesses do need to be in the rural area. Um, and then with technical assistance, if we're going to pay for salaries or expenses, we look at industry standard wage income for the managers, contractors, consultants, and it has to, it should reflect the project area. So we would look at if it's in Taos County, we'd look at what the industry standards for wage income is for Taos County, not Albuquerque. Um, construction, conversion, enlargement, repairs, or modernization for buildings, plants, machinery, equipment, access, streets and roads, parking areas, utilities, and pollution control and abatement facilities. Uh, it can also help with provision of loans for startup operating costs and working capital. It can help with constructing, improving, or purchasing buildings used for economic development of multiple small and emerging private rural businesses provide revolving loan funds to provide financial assistance to third parties through a loan, acquisition and development of land, easement, and right-of-ways, but it must specifically assist small and emerging business enterprises, not, cannot help land for residential housing. Establishment, expansion, and operation of rural distance learning networks or development of rural learning programs that provide educational instruction or job training instruction related to potential employment of job advancement for adult students. It includes, but is not limited to workforce development training. And then opportunity type projects must show economic growth. It can help fund or promote sustainable economic development in rural communities, economic planning, technical assistance to rural businesses and business support centers. But as I've mentioned is we don't get a lot of funding for opportunity type projects, um, very, very small amount. So it's hard to, to find a project that is small enough to get funded. Um, this is the Rural Business Development Grant. It is a competitive reimbursement grant. Um, and if we do projects that include the purchase of equipment, the equipment over $5,000, um, the government will have a vested interest in the equipment. We, the applicant must provide an IRS straight line depreciation schedule. We need a lease agreement with the purchase of the equipment. And then when the equipment is purchased, the applicant must also file a UCC-1 with the state. Projects that include the purchase of real estate must file a federal financial interest. And then um, this grant is, it's, it can have a matching funds portion of it. And so the percentage of match will determine the percentage of fair market value that will be requested if the building or land is sold. And then what I usually like to tell applicants is reach out to us early, talk to us about your project, about your budget, about your application because we can help guide you through this journey, because um, I know that gets complicated. Ineligible use of grant funds. Um, we cannot, the grant cannot duplicate current services or substitute support previously provided. It cannot pay costs of preparing the application package for funding under the program or any other program. It cannot pay for costs for any expenses incurred prior to receipt of a full application. It can't fund political activities. It cannot pay for assistance to any private business enterprise, which does not create or support jobs in the United States. It cannot pay any judgment or debt owed to the United States. We cannot fund agriculture production. It cannot be a pass-through grant. Pass-through grants are for, but not limited to, purchase of refurbishing or remodeling of real estate or use as a business incubator without charging the fair market rental, purchase of equipment for use by an ultimate recipient without charging a fair market rental, the making of a revolving loan fund without taking appropriate security to reasonably assure repayment of the loan. And there cannot be a conflict of interest. All transactions must be arm length transactions. So 
the applicant can't be have somebody on the board who is also trying to receive funds as the small business. So rural business development grant funding um, applications compete at the state office level, which are dependent on appropriations. And then all applications are evaluated based on evidence showing job creation to occur with local businesses, percent of non-federal funding committed to the project, economic need in the area to be served, consistency with local economic development priorities, experience of the grantee with similar efforts, and then other factors described in the notice of solicitation of applications. And we'll go through this as we go through the application toolkit. There is no maximum amount of the grant request. However, smaller requests have higher pri priority due to scoring. And then I included in your packets a, a NOSA, just so you can see it. There's a ton of information in there about what is needed on the application. Um, in the packets is also the System for Award Management, SAM Quick Start Guide for New Grantee Registrations. And then just a checklist to help you think through some of the questions of what needs to, to go into the application. We're gonna go through the forms. They're the forms we use for all, all of our grant programs. Um, so first is the SF-424, and box one is type of submission application. Box two is a new application. Box three, four, five, and six, Six are we we fill out when we receive the application, and then box eight applicant information, legal name. What is the legal name used with the tax identification number? Um, ABC nonprofit. The box C, the UEI, is um, when you fill out the SAM registration, you'll get a UEI number. We need that that in here, the address, um, and then the contact person. Who, who will I be talking to throughout the process if I have questions or um, about the application? And then their contact information, who they are, their contact information, um, type of assistant, or no, type of applicant. Um, in this example, they're a nonprofit with a 501c3 prof, um, status. And then the name of the federal agency, US Department of Agriculture. Um, the There's a couple numbers there. I believe that's pre-filled out. If we don't know it, call us and we'll, we can help you get it. Um, area affected, what area, um, in this case, it's in Pinasco. And then the descriptive title. And you'll see this throughout all of the pages. Four small minority and locally owned businesses in Pinasco, New Mexico will stay in business and expand services and retain jobs to the community with safety and equipment upgrades and improved capacity. Um, Box 16, the congressional district of the applicant, and then of the project. And then an estimated budget. Um, you'll see in this particular um, example, it, they, their request was all for the grant. There is no match. So they're asking for 97,754. If they had a match, it would go under the applicant portion. So they're asking for the entire grant to be 100% for that 97,754 to cover their project costs. Um, whether it's subject to review by state under executive order, 
And then they check the box that they agree that all the information is true to their knowledge. And then there's an authorized representative. And this is the person who will sign all the forms, who's authorized to, to sign and make those decisions. So in this example, um, Ann Trujillo, board treasurer, phone number, email, and then there's a signature with a date. That's important because sometimes we forget to sign the application and um, don't forget. And that, that's the same name we'll see throughout all the forms to that it she has signed all the documents. Budget information. Um, so this is where that 97.754 gets broken down into activity buckets. Um, activity one, activity two, activity three. Um, the section B, they break that budget down even further. Once again, you'll see activity one, two, and three, but it's for equipment, um, direct charges, indirect charges. And then section C breaks it down even further. Um, what they've added is into quarters. Um, there's an assurance uh, agreement, um, making sure that the, the applicant has legal authority to apply for the federal assistance, sign, date, same person, and Trujillo, equal opportunity agreement, um, same person signed, an assurance agreement. Um, making sure that, you know, that civil rights and um, that we are being compliant. Same person signed, Andrew Hill, date. And then there is a 1940-Q certification for contracts, grants, and loans signed and date. There is also an environmental documentation checklist. Um, for the RBDGs, there's not usually a whole lot of environmental we have to check, but we still do have to go through the process. And sometimes we do have some projects because all projects are different. Some will have more environmental we have to go through. In this case, they did it to the best of their knowledge. And so they didn't really feel they had any. So we, you know, they marked NA. <clears throat> I will say though, for this particular project, we did have to do a little bit of environmental just because it's for equipment. Equipment had to go into certain buildings. So there wasn't much, but it's a little more than none. <laughs> For everybody online, um, if you would like a copy of the presentation or an email um, with the packet information, the toolkit or the forms packet, please leave me your email address, um, name and email address in the chat, and um, I will get that emailed out. And I'll try to remind you a few times, um, probably more towards the end. So now we're gonna go through the application toolkit um, that needs to be turned in along with the forms packet for this program. The first few pages is a lot of um, repetitive information of what I just went over. Um, but as it says at the very beginning, good to know before you start, what does the program do? what regulations govern this program, who may apply for the program, what is considered an eligible area. The toolkit also has links to, to help you determine, to go to the website and determine, you know, if you're in an eligible area. It talks about what funding is available, the, our agency initiatives, and then how the funds may be used. Um, once again, the enterprise type 
projects versus the opportunity type projects. Very similar. Basically, opportunity is looking at economic development for larger areas. Enterprise is assisting and helping with small and emerging businesses. We don't have a lot of funding in opportunity type, so we try to encourage people to apply for enterprise. Um, how are applications evaluated for competitive funding? Once again, we'll go through that in this toolkit um, more in depth, but all applications are evaluated on evidence showing job creation to occur with local businesses, percent of non-federal funding committed to the project, economic need in the area to be served, consistency with local economic development priorities, experience of the grantee with similar efforts, other factors that could be included in the NOSA. How do you get started? Um, I would say contact us. Um, we're happy to work with you. We can email you the application. We can let you know um, when the funding, when the application cycle begins. Um, then it goes through background information. Again, um, what is an enterprise grant? What is the opportunity grant? There's a very handy checklist at the beginning of the toolkit. I, I'm always surprised that a lot of applicants don't seem to use it, but it really does go in depth of what everything we need. Um, it starts out with your SAM registration. If you don't have a SAM um, registration, that should be your first step because sometimes it can take a while to get that. Uh, it gives you the link. Um, and then the required forms. Those are the forms we, we just went through. You can come back and check off that you filled them out. The environmental requirements. Then it goes through if you're a nonprofit, what to include in Appendix A. The Articles of Incorporation, Bylaws, uh, Certificate of Good Standing. We need a board resolution authorizing the entity to apply and administer the grant, including the name and title of the per person authorized to sign the grant document. Um, and if you remember on our forms, it was the same and Trujillo throughout the, the, the forms. If you're a public body, what do we need? And then it goes through the different sections of the application toolkit. Did you remember to include the legal name of the applicant, the grant amount, the SAM registration? Did you remember to check the box that says you're certified that you, if you have a relationship or don't have a relationship with an RD employee? Did you remember to check the box that you're certifying that you're serving a rural area? Did you remember to check the box that you're certifying that you're assisting small and emerging businesses? Um, what's your applicant type? What type of your project eligibility? Are you applying for enterprise or opportunity? Did you remember to fill out the scope of work? Did you remember to your written narratives? Did you remember to include your appendices? And um, I, I would use the checklist. I mean, it's very thorough and very handy <laughs> and there for a reason. And then we get into the actual application template. So once again, the legal name of the applicant, ABC nonprofit, the requested grant amount, 97,754. If you'll notice that that number matches what we had on the budget in the forms. We want them to match. <laughs> they, the match amount, they're not asking, they don't have a match amount, so zero. Total project cost, 97,754. Um, what is their applicant type? This particular one was a nonprofit entity, and they were applying for enterprise grant. Their UEI number, their SAM registration code with the expiration date. The expiration date, it can't be expired. If you have a SAM, it can't be expired, um, and, but you can renew it and provide us with the documentation that you are in the process of renewing it. Your NAICS code, which can be found on your tax returns. And then 
there's a, a little table for job summary. Uh, estimate what you plan, you're projected at three years, your current existing number of jobs, full-time, part-time, projected jobs to be created as a result of this project, full-time, part-time, projected jobs to be saved as a result of this project, full-time and part-time. A table to fill out the businesses assisted with this grant. So this particular application, they were assisting four total businesses, one farm, three small businesses, um, and then a project summary. So this rural business development enterprise proposal will assure that three small businesses and one ranch in Pinasco, Taos County, New Mexico will stay in business, expand services, and collectively save 12 existing jobs as well as create 12 new part and full-time jobs in a rural community. And then they go on to say, the businesses and ranch proposed to receive assistance from this grant provide many of those services to both residents and visitors. They're owned by families for generations. Funds from this grant will be used to acquire equipment, make safety upgrades, and purchase and install articles to support increased productivity and expansion that are otherwise beyond the fiscal reach of the ranch and each business. While the ranch and three businesses are well established, they do not have the cash flow to purchase the type of equipment that will allow them to keep their equipment and facilities up to date. Productive and serve large quantities with greater variety of goods. The purchase of new and upgraded hay cutting, raking, baling equipment will allow the ranch to efficiently pr process hay for their livestock and to sell to other ranchers in surrounding communities. The purchase of refrigerators and freezers, food preparation tables and burners and ovens will allow the market harvest and vegetable basket to increase their service capacity and provide additional goods to their customers. The two new kitchen and safeguard Two new kitchen hoods with fire suppression systems will allow these two businesses to meet the state's fire safety code and safeguard their buildings from the from fire. For TSS, a new tire changer, balancer, and compressor will allow the business to improve and expand automobile services to the community and travelers, and upgrade doors and gates will ensure improved security. In their summary, they told us who they're going to help and what they're going to do with their funds. They're clear, concise. There's not a lot of fluff. Um, we just need the basics of the project, um, what they're going to do, who they're helping, what they're going to do, how they're going to do it. And then we get into, this is what we're talking about on the checklist. The certifications, do you have a relationship to an RD employee? You check yes or no. If you're certifying that you're benefiting rural businesses, yes or no. You're certifying that you're, the businesses assisted are at least 51% owned by US citizens, yes or no. If you're applying for enterprise grant, you fill out box or number four, um, all businesses assisted with enterprise grant funds must meet the following definition. So you're saying that yes, all businesses associated with the project meet the RBDG program, definition of small and emerging private business enterprises. Number five, development or financing of small and emerging private business. Describe how the grant funds will be used to finance and develop small and emerging businesses in rural areas. Supporting documentation may be included in Appendix E. So they go to tell me that, that the ranch is a family-owned ranch in Pinasco. They tell me what the ranch is and what their needs are. They go through all four businesses, um, Market Harvest, a roadside food vendor in Pinasco, who they are. The market is often forced to close early because their current refrigeration stores a limited amount of food and they run out before the day's end. Increased and more efficient refrigerator and freezer space will allow the market to purchase greater quantities from local farms, store freshly prepared food, and remain open longer hours to meet increased demand. Um, 
The ranch, the new equipment will increase productivity, process hay more efficiently, which will also help the ranch sustain current employees, create new jobs, allow them to continue as a robust ranch supporting the agricultural backbone of the community. Um, unfortunately, because it's a, a picture, we can't see the other two um, descriptions, but th they were in there. Um, it's not a revolving loan fund, so we go to number seven. It is an equipment application, so they have already done their research. They know exactly what equipment they want to purchase and the cost. They've listed it out in the table and for who it's going to. Pass-through prohibition. To prevent grant funds from being classified as pass-through, please provide a description of how grantee applicant will establish and charge benefiting business ultimate recipient for fair market use of the equipment. So they wrote a paragraph, ABC nonprofit will own all the purchased equipment and will have signed contract with each business specifying ownership in case one of the businesses closes or sells. The contract will include an agreement for all equipment to be leased at far, fair market. The contract will also have a depreciation schedule to determine when the assets have been fully depreciated and at such time will be removed from ABC nonprofit's fixed asset list. ABC nonprofit will also use the UCC for all equipment above $5,000. Opportunity grant applications. So you do the same, but for opportunity, describe the economic development that will occur of the proposed project. This application was not opportunity. So instead of leaving the box blank, not applicable. Um, consistency with local and area stri strategic plans. Um, that's also still talking about opportunity. They should have put not applicable, but um, it doesn't pertain to them. All grant applications. So box A, demonstrated need. Describe the demonstrated need for the project. The rural community of Penasco and its surrounding areas um, have undergone tremendous changes over the past two decades. They continue to go kind of just provide a paragraph of two of why they see the need in their community. The project evaluation described the basis for determining the success or failure of the project. T um, timely purchase and installation of proposed equipment, retention and expansion of the workforce, increased efficiency, improved and expanded automobile services for the community and for traveling motorists, financial recovery, expanded goods. They list how they, they want to evaluate the project. Describe the major elements of the project. Once again, this project proposes to assist one ranch and three small businesses in ways that will increase their capacity to safety and efficiently provide custom hay, food, automobile services to additional customers. And then they list the specifics for each business. Project impact, to describe the procedures that will be used to assess project impact as it is as it's at its conclusion. Project impact will be measured by the improvement of multiple rural small businesses and one ranch in the rural community by improving space, equipment, upgrading two restaurant food vendors with hoods and fire suppression systems, improving capacity for ranch food vendors and an automobile service station by purchasing needed equipment to upgrade service and increase capacity and by installing the doors. Project benefit, explain the benefit of the proposed project. The project will create more jobs for local residents, increase sales, provide additional opportunities to visitors, and help ensure that a family-owned ranch and three small rural businesses in this historically agricultural and tourist economy will remain in business. Um, the ranch and three businesses are committed to retaining several full-time and part-time seasonal employees and adding full-time and part-time employees over the next three years. That correlates to the box we saw earlier. Eligible grant purpose. Explain how the proposed project meets an eligible grant purpose. Supporting documentation can be inserted in Appendix E. The proposed project meets the eligible grant purpose. 
of acquiring necessary equipment, improving buildings to meet county state safety codes and increase the capacity of the local ranch, food vendor, restaurants, automobile service station to serve more customers and ensure local employment. This project is being done in a rural community and then they list you know, their reasons why um, they want to help these businesses in that community. Area to be served, describe the area to be served, identify each government unit, town, county. Um, so then they they talk about the, the area, the multicultural area has a population near 4,000 with the racial makeup of 84% Hispanic, 12% white, 2% indigenous, 2% other. Um, they go into detail about the area served. Description of the project, coordination with Eric, Area economic development, nonprofit in each bit ranch business will work closely with Taos County and its economic development resources. Um, ABC nonprofit is a recent recipient of the 2023 Taos County funding to work towards improving services for Southwest section of Taos County. And then they, they go into specific details of how they're gonna work with the economic development. Businesses assisted. Name and describe the businesses to be assisted in economic development of the accomplished, to be accomplished, including names of the businesses. So non, the ABC nonprofit will assist one ranch and three businesses with the grant. The ranch is, they, I don't know if you're noticing, it's very repetitive. <laughs> A lot of the information we've seen throughout the application template already, but we, it's deliberate. We want to see it over and over. So the ranch is a family owned ranch in Pinasco. They talk about each of the four businesses and how they're gonna help each of the four businesses. The job impact in three years. Um, a focal point of this enterprise project is to ensure the assisted ranch and businesses can remain open and then expand their capacity to serve customers, both locals and tourists. As a result of the business, we'll need additional staff and are committed to adding jobs over the next three years. These employees will be necessary for the increased hours of operation and new and varied services offered. Such jobs increase are important for an area that currently hosts only 52 private business employees so they, they just describe what impact those jobs will have. Applicant experience. Um, describe the applicant entities demonstrated capabilities and experience in providing the proposed assistance or similar economic development activities. And then include experience of key personnel. This is important. This will be part of the scoring too, as you'll see in a few minutes, but we wanna know, um, can the applicant administer the grant correctly? So they tell me not the ABC nonprofit has operated as a nonprofit 501c3 since 1982 and evaluates its services and mission regularly to best meet the growing and changing needs of the communities and families in its service area. In 2020 and in fiscal year 2022, ABC nonprofit was awarded a rural business development grant and successfully met all grant requirements and fulfilled all grant project activities. So they told me that they have they been administering the same type of grant with us a few times now. Now they're helping new businesses. They have a long history of fiscal responsibility. Um, and not only have they been awarded USDA grants, but they've had, um, let's see, a 30,000 Taos County grant for direct services since 2018, as well as multiple foundation grants totaling over 30,000 per year. Um, the Taos County funding, and then they go on to tell me about the, do you remember the authorized signer, her experience managing grants? Um, rationale project area, Pinasco is a primary stop on the popular high road to Taos. Um, so they tell me how they chose why they want to 
apply for funding and why they think that they can benefit from the assistance. The project execution, describe how the work will be performed, including whether the organization staff, consultants, or contractors will be used. The project execution will be specific to each of the three tasks, equipment purchases ordered by ABC nonprofit with business owners, invoices paid by the organization delivery and install, overseen by both the business and the organization. The safety upgrades will be done by a contractor who will order and install the hoods and fire suppression system, as well as the metal flashing to meet the fire safety codes, and a contract will, will oversee the installation of the new doors and security at the tire center. And then they will have the fire marshal and health inspectors. Um, after equipment is fully installed, the fire marshal followed by the health inspector will be scheduled for inspections to ensure the new equipment is properly installed and function. And then we'll see, we get into scoring. The, the application toolkit actually lets you figure out where you think you'll be in the scoring. Some of the categories you might not be able to do anything about, other categories you can, you can kind of manipulate. So here's a few that really you can't do anything about unless you, you really see which counties you wanna help if that's an option, but Population, are you serving a an area under 5,000 people? If so, then you'd get the maximum points. If the population is between 5,000 and 15, you'd get 10 points. If it's between 15 and 25, you'd get five points. Unemployment, does the area exceed the state rate by 25% or more? If so, you'd get the maximum of 20 points exceed the state rate by less than 25%, you'd get 10 point and is equal to or less than the state rate, you'd get zero. Medium household income, is it less than the poverty line? You'd get maximum of 25 points. More than the poverty line, but less than 65%, you'd get 15 points. Between 65 and 85, you'd get 10 points and equal to or greater than 85, zero. Economic distress. Um, is the area being served, the small business in an area being served, is there trauma? And this is FEMA designation. Is natural, nat natural disasters occurred more than three years prior to filing the application. Um, those we get from our national databases, but if it's in a trauma area, you'd get 15 points. Is there economic distress? You'd get 15 points. Long-term poverty, you'd get 10 points. Long-term population decline, you'd get 10 points. <clears throat> and then there's a section again with coordination with area economic development activities. Um, you'd pretty much describe the same thing you did in the previous section, how you're working with area economic development activities. Businesses to be assisted and economic development to be accomplished. Describe the businesses assisted and economic development to be accomplished. Supporting documentation can be used. Once again, you'll describe the businesses to be assisted again. The grant proposes to assist one ranch and three businesses with this grant. Um, they list the, the three bit businesses and the farm. The ranch in each of these three businesses is in its own way a keystone business for the community. And then they gave me specific descriptions again of each of the four businesses. And then you'll see after that the scoring criteria. Applicant has written evidence that small business development will be supported by startup or expansion as a result of the grant five points for each letter for separate businesses up to 25 points. So now they take those four businesses, those businesses have to write a short letter of how they're working with the applicant for, for funds from this grant and to help them create jobs. Um, and with those letters, they can get up to 25 points, five points for each letter. So they actually 
didn't get the max on this grant, but they, they got close. Um, and then they have to tell me the jobs created and saved. Describe how the proposed project will create jobs or save existing jobs in the service area and provide an estimated number of jobs created and jobs saved. This is evidenced by letters from rural businesses that will be directly assisted. Letters must contain jobs created and saved. So in those four letters, they have to tell me how many jobs they plan to create or save. They don't have to write separate letters, but they can put it in there. And then they have to fill out the box. This proposal will create and save jobs by providing one ranch and four recipient businesses with the equipment needed to increase their service and capacity fire safety system to bring them up to code. As a result of the business, we'll need additional staff and are committed to adding eight jobs full and seven part-time over the next three years, saving nine existing jobs. And then under the little box, you'll see number of jobs expected to be created or saved. They have a total of 17. Mm -hmm. Um, so they have a total of 17 jobs in their letters and in this paragraph. So then the next session shows you how that, how we score that portion. Um, so jobs created are the jobs created by the business. Um, basically if there's one job for less than $5,000, you'll get 25 points. Um, so they have, it's their, it tells you amount of grant divided by number of jobs is how you can figure out that score. So 97, 754 divided by 17 comes out to 5,750. So they are one job for 5,000, but less than 10,000. They'll get 20 points for that for providing how many jobs created and how many saved. <clears throat> Applicant experience, expertise, once again, they tell me that they, how they're gonna manage the grant and the previous grants or experience managing grants, both the applicant as a whole and the key personnel. So then you can see it's scored. Applicant has evidence of successful experience in the type of activity. If the applicant and those administering the grant have more than 10 years, they'll get the maximum of 30 points. At least five years, but less than 10, they'll get 20 points. At least three, but more less than five, 10 points. Um, so those are kind of the numbers that you do have control over. Um, and then we go to the work plan narrative. Include how the grant propose, proposes it will be accomplished and milestones for accomplishing the proposed tasks. Additionally, if selected for funding, provide a statement including how soon after notification of grant obligation project will begin. The grant purpose will be accomplished by assuring all needed equipment is ordered and installed, refrigerators, freezers, sandwich prep, prep table, propane range and oven, kitchen, hood systems, fire safety, suppression systems, insulated and non-insulated doors, folding gate, tire changer, tire, balancey, air, tire balancer, air compressor are purchased and installed and contractors successfully install the hood and fire suppression systems, refrigerators and freezers and insulated and non-insulated doors and scissor gates. And then they go on to like the specifics of what they will do. Project budget summary. Summarize the total project budget by tasks. Project should reasonably be completed within one full year after it has begun. Insert additional rows as needed. Um, so we've seen this budget before. It's broken down into their activity buckets. Activity one, they're going to do the system hoods and fire suppression systems. Activity two, they're going to do other equipment upgrades. And I guess I should say they, they have their start date, 8-1-2023, end date. They expect to be done with that particular task by 
November 2023. How much funds will be used to do that? And then the total project cost. Activity three, they want to do the insulated and non-insulated doors, um, their start date, end date, budget. And then this grant did include their administrative costs. So they have <clears throat> they have added their 8,887 as administrative costs. And then we go to, so B, source of funding, if they were providing a match, they would tell us about it in that box there. Um, this particular application didn't have a match. They should have put NA, um, and we like to see the not applicable versus a blank box. Um, C, task budget format. So now we're gonna break our total budget down into the task budget um, categories. So task one, they are telling me that they're gonna spend that 12,997 is on supplies equipment. And then they have broken their administrative down to this particular task is 1,300. In the box, um, just after, they have to give me a description of what that those funds are going to be used for. They These funds are focused on the fire safety system, upgrades necessary for the, the market harvest and vegetable basket to meet the fire codes as outlined by Taos County Fire Marshal. This includes commercial kitchen hood packages for both restaurants and installation of a fire suppression system. Fees for contract labor for these installations will be paid by the businesses. So they're telling me that, that the extra fees are not part of the grant. They will be paid by the businesses. Task two, they broke that down into the 60,452 for supplies equipment. And then again, for their 10% administrative fees, they give me a description. We want the descriptions clear, um, and specific to what the money is going to be used for. Accounts for the purchase of new upgraded equipment for the ranch and three businesses. This includes everything from stainless steel, refrigerated prep tables, refrigerators, freezers, burners, oven systems, to sickle bar, mower and rake, tire char changer, balancer, air compressor. And then they say that ABC nonprofit is asking for a 10% administrative fee due to the sheer volume of equipment to be purchased. They didn't actually list out the specific equipment because we saw that they've already given us an entire form of the specific equipment. Task three, um, 9,242 in supplies and then contractual 6,176. Then, then their, their administrative fee for 1,542. Um, that... I guess I left that off there. The, they explained that they that is the contractor, you know, to install the fire suppression systems, the supplies, the freezer. And then we get to the next page of the scoring criteria. So the size of the grant request. Grant less than 100,000 will get the maximum score of 25 points. 100,000 to 200,000 will get 15 points. More than 200,000, but not more than 500,000, 10 points. And if we remember, their grant is 97 something. It's just under 100,000. Um, and then they tell me about um how they're going to their performance criteria how they're going to measure what they're doing um then the additional scoring this is the discretionary points um that if it's the first time grant could get up to 50 discretionary points for the application um this particular grant is as we've already seen, they've told me they've received other rural business development grants. So they, they're, they're not eligible for the extra 50 points. And so they put not applicable. Then we get into the appendices. 
Appendix A, organizational documents. We need, if you're a nonprofit, we need to be able to see that you have the legal authority to apply for and administer the grant. Uh, we wanna see the articles of incorporation, the bylaws and a certificate of good standing with the state. We wanna see that board resolution saying that, that the entity is allowed to apply for the grant and then who will be the, the signer for the documents. Same from the public body, the legal authority, the documentation of organization, the resolution passed by governing board authorizing the entity to apply and administer the RBDG, including the name and title of the person authorized to sign the grant documents. So I just included a, an example, articles of incorporation, um, the certificate of good standing, Appendix B, we need the latest three years financial information, um, balance sheets, income statements, current audited reports if available. So we have examples of balance sheets and income statements. Appendix C, supplemental funds verification. Documentation verifying eligible supplemental funds are available and have been committed to the project must be included in your application to qualify for consideration under applicable scoring criterion. Um, so this is if they were, if there was a match, we would need to see the documentation that they have the match available. Examples of accountable documentation include a signed letter from the source of funds stating the amount of funds, when the funds will be provided and what the funds can be used for. Um, an executed grant agreement, a signed resolution from your governing board authorizing the use of a specified amount of funds. Um, this particular application, I don't, I didn't put it in here, but they did provide a letter saying that they they weren't able to offer any matching funds. Appendix D: letters of commitment from businesses to be assisted, including jobs created, supported letters of support. We often provide this um, letter template that the small business can just fill out, check off the boxes and fill out, sign and date that counts. Or we can get a, an actual letter from the small business on their letterhead. And if you'll see in here, down in the middle of the letter, it says we expect to save two jobs and create four more. That's the numbers we need to be able to score it higher. Appendix C, additional supporting documentation. Anything else you want to submit or we ask for? Um, resumes from your, your staff who will be working on the grant, who will be included in that part of the scoring process. Um, and then... That's it for the application template. Just a few more, like the maximum possible score is 250 points. Um, although all letters of support and written evidence of commitment are accepted, the only letters that can add to an applicant score are those from the small and emerging businesses um, for both opportunity and enterprise in the state that they will seek the applicant's assistance under, and they must state that they will seek the applicant's assistance under this project. Um, if they state that in these letters, the number of jobs expected to be created and or supported by the business as a result of the assistance, um, be sure that the letters are, be sure that these letters project reasonable numbers for the job expected to be created and saved. So don't fluff them too much. <laughs> and letters need to be an official letterhead when not using the provided form. It's best to get the letters in the small business's own words rather than the, the provided form. And then I have one more, I've showed you one example that was a successful um, application. We have one more. Um, and this one, we left Main Street and Local Innovators Institute in Lovington, New Mexico. They were awarded an RBDG in 2019 
Funds were used to implement the local Innovators Institute of Restaurant Accelerator. They were dedicated to helping small restaurant owners reduce their financial risk when opening the new restaurant. LOI provides information and workshops outlining the fundamentals in owning and managing a restaurant through hands-on experience, as well as testing the consumer palate. LOI focuses on three business fundamentals, restaurant knowledge, business basics, and branding and marketing. As a part of the accelerator, the individual participants are given the opportunity to sell from a food truck a few times per week at the local Innovators Institute's present location. This allows the participants an opportunity to pitch their restaurant and food service concept and share items from their menu with the public. Then in 2020, they came back to us to continue their local Innovators Institute restaurant accelerator. Once again, I wanna remind you if you are participating online to include your email information, your contact information in the chat so that we can um, email you the presentation in any forms or the application template. And we also, here is our contact information. Um, if you have questions or want more information about the program, forms, um, reach out to any one of us, Ray Melton, Kathy Barrett, myself, Maria Meadowcroft, and Delee Taylor. Um, the four of us work closely with this program and can are always happy to answer questions. Do we have any questions? Um, there's what there's, I can start with, I guess the chat. Um, what is the due date for this grant application? Also, what's the length of the funding period? Generally, we don't know when the grant will open and or close until we get notice from national office, but generally it's in the fall, like October, November, they'll, at least the past few years that I've worked it, the, the grant period will open in the fall and usually closes um, by February, the end of February. Um, we here in New Mexico like to have a soft deadline for our state um, early February so that we can review applications and get you feedback before the final date. Once the final date, um, last year it was February 28th. Um, once that final date closes, we can't touch the application anymore. Um, so we can, you know, if we have your contact information, we can send you all that information as it becomes available. What about new agencies that may not have previous grant oversight experience? How would you evaluate these? Um, do you know the answer to that? On those, we would take it based off of the uh, individual experience of the grant administrator. Can you provide an example of approved facility construction and, and land acquisition grant applicant? On those, it could be any business. Uh, for instance, there is a little grocery store supermarket deli in Dixon, New Mexico. They needed to add a patio on to have a location where customers could have a place to sit down and eat lunch. We added on that patio and built it onto that building. I have a question on your qualifications as a small business. I cannot quite read quickly enough, but was part of the qualifications under 50 employees and less than 1 million gross sell, or is it greater than 1 million? This part depends on the NAX code and based on your individual NAX code under the SBA definition of what a small business is. 
you can go in, in SBA, look up that NAX code, and then it will tell you whether or not that is a small business if it meets their criteria and there's less than that. Uh, some of these deals, a small business is less than 100 employees, and they're quite large for New Mexico. So generally, I have not seen us run into an issue where an entity was not considered to be a small business. They've always been eligible because the SBA standards are much higher than what uh, is reported in there by the actual businesses in the state. So typically, uh, you know, knock on wood on that one, I have not had a business be ineligible because they were too large. Are there any more questions? Anybody here in the room? Go ahead. Um, so we were counting the number of employees, full-time employees, and then there was also part-time employees or contract labor, I believe it was. Um, is that considered 0.5 for a part-time? How do you, is there? Go ahead and repeat the question. How do we count the FTE total, basically? Um, and of employees of jobs created or jobs saved. Um, that gets tricky, actually. Okay. <laughs> what we generally do is we take what you show as an actual full-time employee. Which is how many hours? It's eight hours. Eight hours, okay. eight hours a day and 40 hours eight a week. Hours. And then we take the part-time employee. Now, most of the time, you do not provide me whether they work two hours or they worked seven. So we don't know on a part-time employee, but typically what I do is I look at it and I make sure first that you're providing me with realistic employee numbers because everybody's favorite thing to do is tell me that they're doing a feasibility study that doesn't create any jobs. And then they come in and tell me that's gonna create and save 200 jobs, okay? That's unrealistic. Don't do that. Come back in and tell us what's actually going to happen. Most of these little grants, they will come in and they'll be, let's say, a tire shop, like the example that Maria went through. And they have three full-time employees and one part-time employee, and they may save those jobs and then create one more. And so that's typically what we like to see. Realistic numbers. Uh, that tell the truth. Don't tell me that you're creating a thousand jobs. I don't believe it. Um, Sandra, I don't know how to unmute you. Let me see if I can figure that out. Um, in the meantime, are there any other questions here in the room? Does anyone have anything they'd like for me to explain on the scoring? Anything at all? I'm here for you. If you're not already, um, sign up for the federal register notices. Um, you can determine, right. like, pinpoint what areas you want to get in. It's a lot. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. You don't sure. want to do a lot. Um, use wisely because you'll be inundated with um, information. But it is a good idea because your, you know, submitted notices. Um, and the funding is, becomes available. And that is kind of the best, <laughs> like what, you know, you're going to do. They do not issue me a crystal ball. I do not know when these programs will roll out, but I will give you to the best of my ability when I think they will roll out. And I'm already thinking that we are having a soft deadline for this RBDG program. February 1, I do the very best that I can to have these ladies look at your application, at least give you some feedback, what we can. Here lately, we have been very, very busy, and they don't have the time. In fact, they're growling at me because we're putting on these presentations. <laughs> but that's what we try to do, and I'm going to tell you that the national office deadline will be February 28th again. That's when that will occur. Uh, our REAP program we did have two deadlines. Now we have four. Every quarter, that REAP program hits, and we are processing applications and cycling stuff out. And then in that, we're doing business and industry guaranteed loans. 
Uh, we're looking at value-added producer grants. Those typically occur right around the 1st to the 15th of May. So th that's an additional program that's out there that you can look at. Follows basically the same format. So there's, there's a lot of stuff that goes on throughout the year. We're jumping from program to program continuously. Um, Sandra, were you able to unmute yourself? Maybe it's my computer that. Yes, ma'am. Can, can you hear me? Hold on. Let me see if I can turn my computer up. Megan, help. <laughs> Which one? Okay, can you see if we can hear you? Okay, can you hear me now? That's just going to be support. I can't um, slightly. Let me see if we can go ahead and ask your to... question, and I'll see if we okay. can. Um... I'll try to speak louder. Okay. Um, I have several questions, but um, one of the ones, uh, one of the sections, you have letters from businesses that will be helped by the project. Yes. But if, if we want to create a business incubator with the funds, and we don't know who specifically will benefit right away, could we substitute uh, local organization letters, um, economic development organizations at all? Okay, so her question is about the letters of the small businesses. And if they want to create the small business incubator, and they don't have small businesses yet, could they su supplement those letters by business organizations? Yes, they could supplement that for the business incubator because that is going to be a opportunity grant and they will have to select that funding and they could get, uh, for instance, the Chamber of Commerce in a community and that Chamber of Commerce could submit that letter of support and uh, show their support for that business incubator. Okay, so um, I was thinking the business incubator was under the enterprise grant. She was thinking the business incubator is under the enterprise grant. Uh, if it's a business development center, it's going to be under that opportunity grant and you cannot fund it under the enterprise. Oh, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, I had a couple of questions that I put in the chat. So uh, is this, sorry, I don't know quite how to- Siobhan, is Siobhan? It's Siobhan? Yes. Um, we did see your questions and we answered them. Did you, um, that was- Examples of approved facility construction and land acquisition grant applications. Yes, so um, I'm, I'm also with the Small Business Development Center, and um, we do live in a rural area that's um, a high rate of uh, low uh, high, high rate of poverty, and so we I have some folks who are interested in constructing um, a facility. Uh, purposely for uh, like a water treatment, uh, uh, like a well to like a co-op water program. And so, uh, you know, building a, a community facility. So I wanted to get some examples of, you know, how that would, you know, help and what that would look like in an application as far as um, being okay. able to um we we did answer this question we um referred to the dixon co-op um, dixon okay but but you're also talking about community facilities um so she's asking she has projects um to construct that some um small businesses need like wells or um more community facilities type projects. And um, we, we're the business um, portion of USDA. So we only work with small business, small and emerging businesses. 
Um, okay. But we do have a community facilities program here with USDA, and I can send you in their information. They do, okay. for community facilities, help with wells and water, um, not so much for specific small businesses. Is that okay? Correct? Do you know? And <clears throat> I'm sorry. I do. Oh, I do have another question. So I have a, a person who is um, in need of wanting to purchase um, equipment, a 3D printing equipment to um, generate a product. And they don't have land and they don't have a building, but they want to kind of create a manufacturing plant to produce um, a, a product. Uh, would that be covered? you know, as far as developing small businesses and, and how would I be able to assist that individual in, you know, the wording and 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 including the types of things that they need for to open up like a, a manufacturing type facilities to produce their product. Okay, so the question is, she has a small business that needs equipment, but they don't have the space for the business yet and um so purchasing land and or the building they want to purchase like a, maybe a manufactured like a manufactured home could or how would that work uh, we could do the equipment however we would not allow you to administer that grant until they had a facility to install that equipment into. So what a person would have to do is have the facility first. You could have the approval on the grant and we could have the funds obligated for the equipment, but we would not allow you to purchase that equipment until we had a facility to install them in. And that's one of the area, that's one of the, because I, I have another a client who, who wants to open up a business and they need facilities. Um, this particular client has the materials for the facility, but they don't have land. So is, would that be, okay, so there's not so a construction piece for the business side? Is that what you're saying? Construction loans or, or grants? So then um, they don't have the land, but they have the material to build the building. Yes. And so you're asking how, if this grant could help purchase the land? Yes, purchase the right? land. Yeah, purchase the land and then help with the, you know, the labor or whatever to actually construct. They just have raw materials. So they would need you know, a foundation and those kinds of things to actually, you know, have someone construct the facility. Okay. So our, the, our the funds to be able to construct it. To help purchasing the land and um and then possibly for the labor to build the structure. Okay. That can be done. Now here's how that works. And you need to get a grasp of yourself and listen to me. We would go in and depending on the percentage of match and the total cost of the property, naturally. Let's say we had a $100,000 property and that was going to be the cost of um, purchasing the, the land and constructing the facility and all of the materials, et cetera. And let's say that you had received a $90,000 grant from us and we are doing 10,000 in a match. It could be uh, applicant match, it could be a match from uh, another business, it could be uh, a match from the state and LIDA funds. The only thing it cannot be is federal to federal. So I cannot match my federal dollars to another source of federal dollars from the DOE or another agency. Now we would go into this transaction. I'm putting up 90,000, you're putting up 10,000. And I am going to file a federal financial interest on this property. Essentially, it is a mortgage by the federal government. Okay. And how I like to explain this to people to make it clear is this is now a zero interest loan instead of a grant for the life of the depreciation of the building. So if we have building material, we have wiring, 
we have real estate, we have plumbing, we have all of the different aspects that you have in a building, and we take the straight line IRS depreciation method, which is not accelerated depreciation. So for the next 50 years, I am now your partner. <laughs> okay. Every three years, I will come out and I will do a civil rights compliance review. And I will check to make sure that you're being fair and equitable to everyone that comes in and uses the facility. Okay. Now, that being said, let's say we rock along here and the business does well. And 10 years later, uh, you know, you still have it in your mind that this is a grant. I just told you it was a zero interest loan. You decide to sell this facility. And now you're going to sell this facility for a million dollars. Well, guess who gets 900,000 back? <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, 50 years from now, when this thing's fully depreciated and you have it sold it and you're still operating your business and doing your thing, I lose federal financial interest. Okay. Once I've lost that fi federal financial interest, I walk away. Now you have a grant. Now okay. it's, yours. it's the same thing with equipment. You have to take the equipment that you're purchasing for those businesses. If any one item is over $5,000, now that item is not considered a supply, it's considered real equipment, and it is now on a straight line IRS depreciation schedule. So I file, that's why we have the UCC-1, you file the UCC-1 on it, and we sit there, and after the grant's completed for each year, you submit to me a depreciation schedule that shows X amount of dollars has depreciated off of this item. Once that item is below $5,000, now I no longer have federal financial interest, UCC-1's released, I walk away from the project. Okay. And how the federal government typically likes to see these things set up is they had in there, you have to pay a fair market lease. Coincidentally, what the federal government considers a fair market lease is the same as the depreciation on a straight line method. So your lease is a straight line IRS depreciation method. It's not a full market lease. Those okay. funds get set aside in a separate checking account by the grant administrator. And those funds are there for that piece of equipment. If it breaks down or has issues and needs repair, the grant administrator pays for that piece of equipment to get repaired. The end recipient doesn't have to pay anything. Okay. We rock along and let's say it's something wonderful like computer equipment that depreciates in three years. Thank goodness. <laughs> that depreciates quickly on that straight line method. Whenever, and you know, you've collected the lease, you've got your account setting there and everything's rocking along. Now it's fully depreciated. I am out of the picture. What the federal government likes to see and what I prefer to see we talk about this up front. I talk with you about it before you do it. You have negotiated with that in business that at the end of that time frame, when I walk away, you will give them and deed to them, transfer title, whatever needs to happen, that piece of equipment to them. You will go back to that account that you have been collecting lease on. You will pull out a reasonable amount for administrative cost not to exceed 10%, you will return the rest of those funds back to that end recipient business. Okay. Now I have a true grant. So you have to look at these equipment and real estate purchases as zero interest loans until they are fully depreciated. Then I have given you a grant. That's the okay. hardest thing for people to wrap their head around. We put in a little grocery store in a community and I went out and inspected it. The mayor was happy. Everybody was having a great time. We had a store. Everything's wonderful. Later on, we get a new mayor elected. And I show up. And I say, hey, I'd like to inspect the building. What are you doing here? This is a grant. No, 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 ma'am. Read it again. This is not a grant. That grocery store is mine for the next 30 years. Oh, wow. That's where they don't understand that. And everybody gets upset and they freak out. And 
say that whoever did the project before them was out of their mind and all the <laughs> lovely things that go on. But that's how you look at these equipment and real estate projects. I will thoroughly explain that to you. So there is no confusion whatsoever on what you and the end recipient need to do as your responsibilities, because I do not want anybody coming back to me yelling, saying you fib to us. And now we've, we're in this situation. You're going to know the situation you got yourself into when you do this thing. Okay. Okay. Hope Wonderful. that explains your question. It does. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Is there anyone else? Like I said, there's there's scenarios like that that I need to explain to you on any given situation that you get into with this grant program so that you don't have any heartburn and you know you're fully advised when you step into this saying what you're doing with it. Looks like we don't have any more questions no. here. Okay, so... May funds to cover management of the grant be included in the proposal, for example, to cover for external accountant and reporting manager? Yes, ma'am. No more than 10%. So you're a summary of programs. Are all of these programs available? Go ahead. So in our summary of programs, um, are all the programs actually available? Yeah. Is that? <laughs> what does, annually, do these come up that you can actually apply for these or are some of these on hiatus or whatever the word? Some of them occasionally will be in hiatus. Uh, for instance, the value-added producer grant program in my career, 16 years, it has not been funded on two or maybe three years but then the following year we had a surplus and so we had a larger funding that next year um some programs will fluctuate in funding for instance right now in the REAP program i have more money than i can throw and burn and i don't know what to do with it I would add to that, it depends on if you have the most current summary of programs, because <laughs> we, that, that is the most current, but we've heard that there's a new one coming out soon, too. They, they actually um, published a new one, but forgot one of our main To programs, include so one they, of the programs. <laughs> but if you have an old one, I mean, our programs come and go, and some of them. I don't think it does. We we have a meat and poultry processing program. We just got through shutting down the food supply chain program. Sometimes they come fast and go fast. Okay. And so I, I've got this in mind. Call you and say you yes. Contact us. And then, <laughs> one of the key things. And some of these programs, these ladies are not going to know, and I'm supposed to know. And then some of these programs, I'm like. <laughs> Uh, maybe, uh, and then some of the programs they roll out and they will have a wonderful, get a $2 million grant and this can happen. And then they have me deliver reality and say, uh, for the entire U S we have $2 million. Okay. So those things do occur. Don't throw me under the bus. I'm just telling you like it is. <laughs> And so that's what you will run into. And like I said, there's probably 35 different programs there that you'll go through and look at. And I do not know every one of them. And I've been here 16 years and I'm never going to know all of them. Some of them are strictly administered out of the national office. They had a program that I'd never heard about to where you could have a uh, food top garden. They were doing it for, you know, communities that were a little bigger in size. And they were actually paying money for people to have gardens on the rooftops of some of their apartment buildings uh, because of food. We're trying to do stuff with food and, and keep good quality food throughout the U.S. Um, so it is, um, that's a moving target and I will give you the best answer that I have. I am not going to tell you that that is a correct answer on that question now. <laughs> good luck with that one. I, I do have another question if someone else doesn't I think there's some in the chat so yeah I, I was know. gonna um yeah. okay 
Hold your question for one second. Sandra, Sandra Jones, can a business apply directly for this grant or do they need a nonprofit or government fiscal agent? They do have to have a nonprofit, a public body or a Native American tribe to apply for and administer this grant. We get applications every year where someone has seen this on the website and the business comes in and applies directly and it is immediately ineligible. Yes. And then her next question, can one applicant apply for multiple projects in the same grant year? Yes, they can do that. They will be competing against themselves and other projects. So if they do one project over here and this project over here, they're going to compete against each other. And there's a good possibility that one of them will not be funded. I actually had three or four years ago, an applicant that did that, and they ended up doing both projects. Can a grant be written to help start up a rural rental car company under enterprise? What kind of assistance would they be providing them? So Sandra, uh, we need more information on that question. Um, yeah, what I meant was, um, I don't mean under enterprise rent a car. If a community has no rental car service at all, um, could a grant would it would it be possible to have it something like um, starting up a rental car service? Could that be a potential eligible? project for the enterprise grant so if a community doesn't have a rental car company in that area under the enterprise grant can that enterprise grant help with with startup of a rental car company yes i will need to visit with you about it and tell you the tricks and the things that you should not do to make it smooth for you. But yes, you can build a business from the ground up with it and you can start a rental car business with it. Can a project include other federal funding and remain eligible? No, unless it's BIA money or BIA money is transferred to the tribe or Pueblo and loses its federal identity. If there's other federal grant funds in it, it will be ineligible for our program. I can work with state, I can work with other foundations, and I can work with donations from a community, uh, from the grant administrator, and from the end recipient. But I will not uh, do a grant that has matching funds from another federal entity. Can you use both the REAP and RBDG at the same time on a larger project along with LIDA funds? Yes. For different parts of the project. Yes. Okay. That would reduce her 50% match on the read. Mm -hmm. Well, if there's a thing, you have the same project. REAP does REAP. RBDG can't assist with that REAP, or I'm using federal to federal. But let's say that they had to do the lighting, the wiring, and this stuff over here. The RBDG we took and we did two befores and stucco and other parts of the project that were not eligible for REAP. You got to put your mind to it and then visualize basically two different projects is what it boils down to. Now, LIDA money, yeah, sure, throw them in. Now, LIDA wouldn't work great on the REAP side, but uh, LIDA would be perfectly fine on the RBDG side, and we can do that. What ends up happening, the best thing to do when you have a project and you're fleshing this project out, I don't want you calling these ladies. They're up to their neck already. Call me and I will tell you how you need to structure your project and get it set up to where it looks really nice for them. Then we take the nice package to the ladies and they finish it. That's how you do this deal. And I need people that will take small rural businesses and help them fill this out so that I can get the money to these small businesses, to the end recipients. In that aspect of it, to keep the nonprofits supported, they need to charge me the 10% administration cost 
So they get some money for assisting this small business and helping me with my grant program. Most of them that I get don't ask for any administrative funds. So they're getting nothing for doing this. Okay. 10% is the normal limit. 10% is all I will allow. Is the, if you do 10.01, it's out. And So if it's $30,000 and you're going to do $3,001, I am sorry, ma'am, you are ineligible. If you do $3,000 or $29.99, you're eligible. We're real, cut it off right there. And, and like I said, that will deem it ineligible and no, nothing I can do after the grant period to fix it. Were there any more questions in the chat or online, I guess? <laughs> I think that's all in the chat. Uh, this, I had another question as far as enterprising, which is, um, would it be considered um, an enterprise if you're um, creating a school to help uh, immigrant children uh, in the community to have um, to receive education? Would that be considered enterprise or is that something else? Okay, let me let me make sure I get the question right. Um, could it be enterprise? If you wanted to, wanna just, yeah, go ahead. Build? Did you say build a school? I, I just start. Well, and and building would be a part. Well, I I, I think I understand the real school? estate. Yeah, yeah, but it would need to be built. So we we can yeah we can put that. I know that would. That, well, when we start the building part, it's going to be a loan, right? Because it has real estate. But just to even start a school um, that houses uh, immigrant uh, children. Uh, so start a school that houses immigrant children. Is uh -huh. that eligible? How is that assisting a small and emerging business? It would be start. It would be a startup business. Is that is a school the, not the considered school would like be a, a business? startup business? So yes, would it not be considered a business? Uh, no. Okay. Okay. Any more questions? Thank you all for coming and attending. I appreciate it. Uh, if there are any questions, please direct them my way. My cell phone number is five zero five. <laughs> 5944. I do try to answer my calls and texts that same day, but understand that I'm in meetings like this or talking to clients. Uh, my life is just not that easy. And sometimes it may be the next day or whenever, whenever I can get a hold of you but I do respond to all of my messages and I will take the time to sit down and talk to you and address projects just like this lady's going through and addressing you know, individual projects that she already has in mind. I will sit there and talk you right through it to where you'll come to that aha moment and realize what you have to do. Question, Ray, was that 505-219-5944? Yes, ma'am. There you go. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is very helpful. I appreciate you and guys don't be taking time. That's my government cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. May I ask um, one other quick question? Sure. You had you had a project in Lovington. Yes. Um, and one of the things we see um, with our folks who want to test out a food concept they could drive to Santa Fe to the kitchen, which is like a 45 minute drive from us, um, which is not doable for, you know, transporting or catering, but the Santa Fe kitchen charges $600 a week, I think is what it turned out. If you did the whole week, do we have to, I know you said something about charging. If we get a successful project, you have to do market rate. Is there any way we, if we were successful, we could do a graduated rate where eventually they get to a market rate after six months? Is, is there any leeway with that? Why don't, 
to answer, hopefully answer your question, I can have Ray explain how the Lovington Project works, um, and that might provide better understanding of it. So she's asking about the Lovington Project, and they have restaurants or um, entrepreneurs who actually drive to Santa Fe. I'm assuming from Los Alamos, is that? Um, well, actually, no, they're not going there. But that's the closest rentable commercial kitchen. The closest it's, rental commercial kitchen is in Santa Fe, 45 minute drive, which isn't practical for mm -hmm. food. And so would they have to charge like fees for this? So, so I think one of the best ways to explain that might answer your questions or um, is to explain how the Lovington project works. And Bray is great at explaining that because it has been a very, very successful project <laughs> um, for them. Okay, on the Lovington project, the first thing that we did with the main street in Lovington is we purchased the food trailer. We got it set up, got everything in it that it needed and got it in a position to where they could start training business entrepreneurs. Understand that in the restaurant industry, there's only about a 35% success rate on business entrepreneurs starting a new restaurant. So their main focus was not teaching them how to cook. Their main focus was teaching them how to run a restaurant business, how to pay the taxes, how to get the certifications, how to set up menus. Then the phase of it, the final phase of it was, is we, there was one restaurant, why this came to being, there was one restaurant in Lovington that basically fed everybody. The restaurant owner is actually on the board of the chamber and asked them to help because he would like to retire. And when he retires, that restaurant will probably go away. There'll be no one there to pick it up and carry it on. So we will now no longer have a place to feed people. So they set this trailer up, got everything going. We helped them get everything set up the way that it needed to be. Then the second phase of that in 2020, we went in and we actually have an individual that is training these people like a college course when they come into this food trailer and we rotate these entrepreneurs through that trailer and through the course. So he'll have some that are doing in-class work. He'll have some that are in the trailer and different phases of it. They added a beer and wine um, license to it to where uh, they could have, you know, people could sit down and enjoy their meal. They put a little patio now out in front of it with umbrellas, with fans, try to keep it cool where you have a enjoyable atmosphere. And that's what they've done to continue this setup with it. Because we weren't specifically allowing an end recipient to have that trailer, this trailer is specifically to the chamber. We do not have to pay lease or go through the other items with it or I'm gonna claw it back. So it is there, it is the chamber's trailer. Now, the beauty of this little project that we did is you can take this to any small community in New Mexico and do the exact same thing. We could have hundreds of these little uh, kitchens around and people could go in and use it and you could train businesses up that would be, you know, trying to get into the restaurant industry. Now, you know, recognize that 70% or, excuse me, 65% of those people going into that trailer are not gonna make it. Then what Lovington has done further, since the out migration, they have a lot of empty buildings in town that they actually own. Now, when they get a winner, and they get a good restaurant business that has done well in the trailer, they are taking their own building downtown, the city is, and they're getting it fixed, and they'll probably come back for a grant from me to do that next, where this business entrepreneur can move into a building and have a restaurant in a building. That's what I think their end game is, so that they get some restaurants established there besides Allsup's and McDonald's, where people can go and eat. So that's how that little project works. Again, something like that, I would need to sit down with each of you and flesh that out, 
talk to you about it, tell you the pitfalls, tell you what would work, what's the easiest way to get it set up. But actually, I could probably redact that grant and give you that redacted grant application and go, here's how you do it. Mm -hmm. The girl that wrote this up did a very good job. And I actually, this was the last one that I did myself <laughs> whenever I was getting promoted. I did this project here. So I've kind of beat it to death because that's the last one I can remember. Um, but that's how you can set up and do these projects like this that have equipment. And because under a normal situation, you would say, well, that's a pass-through grant. No, it is not because they are actually taking that and they are training all of these students entrepreneurs through that trailer. I so hope you helps. could, yes, sir. So, yes. Right. So you could potentially... She asked if all these businesses have to be in New Mexico, and yes, they do. Okay, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to follow up with, so regarding the Lovington project, it could be possible for, say, the Chamber of Commerce, if they're, if they're the grant applicant, to request, say, two food trucks for training and implementation of you know a concept they they could potentially do something like that and just lease the trucks so to follow up with the lovington project the chamber it could be possible for the chamber to to do something similar and then lease Lease. Yes. Purchase a food truck. Purchase the food truck. And lease it to and lease entrepreneurs. It. Yes, they could do a project like that. We could purchase a food truck and then lease the food truck out to individual businesses on a straight line IRS depreciation method. When the food trailer fully depreciates, I walk away. There you go. Thank and you. Then, would the Lovington project be considered opportunity? No, that was an enterprise. Can you explain how that's enterprise? And then I, I have another question about the food truck. Say if the chamber were to purchase the two food trucks and do the training, the people conducting the training, would they charge the 10% administrative fee or could there be um, like compensation built into that for them to be paid to do the training as well? So she's asking how it's enterprise which i'm finally starting to understand it's a technical assistance project so um you're providing technical assistance training for entrepreneurs to learn how to run a restaurant business and that makes it enterprise yes So when you describe the person, the people training the individuals like uh, college level courses, how are the trainers compensated? Are, is, are they just well, volunteering? If or is you'll there... remember in the presentation, we talked briefly about technical assistance projects okay. and you write in their, the salaries, what will be paid to those trainers in the grant application. Okay, yeah, and then you determine it based on your area. I think you guys said yes. you couldn't get a salary for Albuquerque if you're living in the small area. Yes. Okay. That was and then the what, what do you, what, where do you get that salary amount just based on the area? Um, you can find it online. Okay, gotcha, thank you. And she asked where you find the salary amount for the rural areas. Yes, that is another thing that I checked because I've noticed here this year, uh, some of the salaries that were being quoted were very absorbent for areas uh, that they were going to to do the training. And there are several online tools that you can use that will tell you approximately what people can get paid. So use those as guides on how you pay your contractors and go from there. Because typically it's $100 or less an hour to pay uh, someone to go in to do that type of Training now, it depends on the training and there could be fluctuations in that, but I've been getting price quotes around 400 an hour. 
somebody's trying to make a little money off of me. They figured it out. That, that's a lot of money. That's a that's a big markup. So just for clarity, and I'm sorry that I'm asking so many questions, but while while we have you guys and, and this kind of came up, how was how are the supplies uh you know uh replenished? So if we have you know, five different entrepreneurs who have, you know, different cuisines and they're coming in. Do you build that kind of inventory into the grant as well for supplies or is that just a separate? No, she's asking now how, if in this type of grant, um, how the supplies are, are accounted for. Um, and if we build them into the grant, if and the example is if you have five different businesses who are using those supplies. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, same thing. You would build those into the grant in the budget as supplies of what you will be needing or using. For each right. entity. For each, for each business, right? Separately, like was in the example. Yes. Yes. Okay. Everybody looks bored to tears with me. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Appreciate the question. If there's anything else, please call me. As you can see, I will spend all the time in the world that I have to with you to tell you the answers to your questions. Thank you all. Thank you.